difficult for the unit manager to align the goals with the um, with his or her supervisor. All right, think of it that way. All right, so let's go to the second one. <coughs> do you need to do anything? Yeah, fine. I can't connect in here sometimes. It's really bad. All right. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, the second objective will explain why companies use performance evaluation systems. And let's start with the performance measure. Uh, you mean by... Alright, so... I'll give you an example. So let's, um, and I think that example was in your book. So let's say we have a set of hotels, all right? Let's look at the, for example, Double Tree Hotel. So what they do, in fact, they segment their business by property. And each property is going to share one centralized. Um, there's a basement office, all right? And one centralized website. At the same time, because it's a it's decentralized, we said by by what? By property, right? If we if we have the centralized, it means there is no duplication of costs, right? So when our person is calling in, trying to let's say make a reservation or something, right? They're going through one system, right? That's a that's your uh, avoiding duplication of costs, right? Whether if you have a uh, decentralized by location and you have a person sitting and doing it at each location. That's increased cost, right? So let's say I have one person sitting, I don't know, in Seattle and doing all of the reservations for US versus if I'm calling to that particular location and reserving right there. Do you see how many people I might be hiring and how my cost might be going so much higher, right? Does it make sense? All right. So. Right now, it's a second nature to you, right? But um, it's the second nature that the business is going to try to avoid duplication of costs, right? But this is just for you to, I know it's probably you're thinking, OK, well, it doesn't make sense. How do they duplicate the cost? I just think that could have been a disadvantage if they were to do that, all right? All right. Going forward, so we're trying to explain why our companies are using uh, performance evaluation systems. <clears throat> All right, so we have different performance measurements um, that we've talked about. Now let's just overall go through the um, performance measurement that serves our managers a purpose. So what is it? We provide our top management with a framework for maintaining control, right? So once our company is decentralized, right, we've learned all these tools, but now we're applying a new concept of decentralized um, company. So once the company decided to decentralize, our top manager is no longer going to be involved in every single decision making process, right? But at the same time, top management needs to know if those decisions at the decentralized, at that subunit level, are effectively meeting company goals, can, right? Can you give an example of a, of a company that would be very centralized versus a company that would be more decentralized? Well, like we said, decentralized is going to be a bigger company. Right, so a centralized company. Huh? Someone gave an example? Yes, I'm just. I 
don't know, all for the bookstore. <laughs> right? Versus Barnes and Noble. So. It's hard to name it because it's usually a smaller it's like company, a special, right? Like, it's not like either word, it's kind of like either more it or less. It might be a highly specialized local okay. store, maybe just a general local store, but it's usually a smaller business, is what it is. It's more or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more about the performance measurement. So how, what if, go back to it. Okay, so our decentralized organization, they need such a system that would communicate different, not only different goals, but also some ways of evaluating achievement of those goals, okay? To our subunit managers and farm. So what is the pri primary goal? We have a number of them, promoting goal congruence and coordination, communicating expectations, motivating unit managers, providing feedback benchmark and benchmarking. All right, so um, hold on, I want to talk to you about something else here. So obviously there are also going to be some limitations of our financial performance um, measures. So what are those? I'm just going to talk briefly about it. I don't want you to have a slide on it. All right, it's just for you to have in mind. So obviously we're going to have some systems that are outdated, um, and they might not be entirely accounting for all of the financial performance of the company. Um, some also managers are going to have the problem is probably going to be uh, also with our managers leading or insisting on certain goals that might not be a part of the business. Okay, that's also uh, some of the drawback and limitation. And also, um, not always our managers are going to be able to signal back um, predict performance of the over the longer period of that decentralized location. So let's look um, our performance reviews to evaluate cost revenue and profit center. So here we're going to spend quite some time. All right. So what do we do with our performance report? What is it for? The performance report is so that we can capture the financial performance of cost, revenue, and profit centers. Right. So we've talked about those centers a little bit. Now. Um, our cost center is going to include all the information where the actual costs uh, are compared with budgeted. Our revenue center is our actual revenue with budgeted, all right? And the profit center where your actual um, and budgeted information on both revenues and costs is um, included. So that's the performance report, three parts of it, right? Um, also, I wanted to note that the profit centers, while they are responsible for both, um, while, while the cost and the revenue just have the, uh, the actual comparison to the budget of the cost or either revenue, the profit is going to combine all of it. Okay, so it's going to have both parts. So pay attention that. Um, that's the difference between them. Now let's look at each one and see how they look, what are they composed of, and how um, how we calculate them. All right, so cost center performance report. Let's look at the control costs. Um, so usually is a good indicator is our flexible budget variance. What is a flexible budget variance? It's the difference between actual and the flexible results of the, um, let's let's look at the payroll for example so we have our flexible budget variance it's a payroll processing department performance uh, where we have salary and wages payroll benefits equipment depreciation supplies 
and other expenses, and we calculate our total expenses. Now see this, we have our flexible budget variance calculated, and it's either favorable or unfavorable. And we also calculate the percent of variance, all right? So that indicates to us um, a level of the performance of a level of the performance for the for that particular unit. All right. So also, sometimes you are going to see that the payroll processing department only is going to incur expenses and not quite generate any revenues. So you will see salary wages, payroll benefits, and such and such, calculating just our total expenses, right? So that's why we're going to uh, consider it as a cost center, right? Our expenses is our costs. Okay, the next one, um, the revenue center performance report. So how is this going to look? Our generate, well, we'll be generating our sales revenue and we'll look at the Speciality DVD Department Performance Report. And again, the same smart touch. Okay, so what do we what did we say? We said we said that um, our revenue center reports are going to look um, at flexible budget and the um, actual by comparing actual sales and the static um, master budget, right? Okay, so we're looking at flexible budget variance and the sales volume variance. Um, we have number of specialty DVT and the special DVT. We have, uh, we're calculating our sales revenue. For the actual sales, we have flexible budget and the static budget, and we're comparing the two, the three, sorry. Okay. No. All right. So let's go to the next one. So we have profit center performance report here. Um, in profit centers, as you remember, our managers, are, oh, well, they were responsible for generating revenue and controlling costs, right? So we're going to be com combining um, the two right now. So we're producing profit through generating sales and controlling costs. So let's look at the DVD performance uh, report, just one line of product. So what do we have? We have sales revenue, variable expenses, contribution margin, traceable fixed expenses, and then divisional segment margin. We also calculate our flexible budget variance and the percent of variance, right? Okay. Um, we also remember that one of the drawbacks of the decentralized um, of the decentralization is that sometimes our units are going to be duplicating costs, right, um, as well as assets. Yeah. Okay. So um, how is it? The, how how can we see it here? Where our costs and assets might be duplicated? What do you think? If you're buying something in bulk, you get a, you get a reduced uh, price, the bigger quantity you buy. So if a, bunch right. um, so a bunch of different companies are buying it, then, then you get the less expense from, from the bulk. Mm -hmm. So that'd be a, a variable expense. All right, that's a good example. So let's look at the performance, um, some other. Before we do the exercise, hold on a second. We'll do that in a second. Um, so just in general, let me just reiterate what our performance reports are for. We um, use management by exception to determine which variances are worth investigating. So we'll look at the three reports and we'll see which one is probably the, cost, the outstanding one is for costs, right? Um, and we'll investigate why. We'll also look at the variances only, all right? So you're not gonna look at all the numbers. More likely you'll go just through your variances to see which one is really standing out for you, 
right? Um, usually it's done by the software and then you know the red flag is going to pop up in some numbers. Then your smaller variances are not going to have uh, and not going to requ require any attention, right? So only the ones that are of a larger number of the ones that requires most of the attention. Um, it also allows managers because it's you know quite removed when the company is decentralized for the manager. It doesn't truly really pose a lot of blame on the next standing manager, right? But rather makes you to investigate what's actually happening, what's actually happening. So this allows you to focus on information itself rather than a person. And also you are focusing on underlying reasons for performance and you are able to take corrective um, measures, actions. Some variants are going to be uncontrollable, so those are also of your lowest priority, right, if any. All right, so let's look at this little example. So what we're trying to do is to say which center is um, described here. So just to remind you, it's a profit, revenue, investment, costs, right? Um, all right, so each of the following managers has been given certain decision-making authority. Manager of Holiday Inn Central Reservation Office. So what are they doing in Reservation Office? Centralizing. Are they creating a revenue? No. All right, so that's where you should be coming from. So that would be your revenue center. Managers of various corporate owned holiday in locations. No revenue. Huh? No revenue. Hmm? They, don't, they don't create the revenue. Who? The managers. They just manage. Huh? Huh? What are our options? You have revenue, profit, investment, and cost. Cost. Yes. Revenue, investment, profit, and cost. Is it revenue? How can you, how can you or is it profit? How, how can you determine if you're trying to identify what is a certain decision making authority that they're given? Likely. Why that decentralization took place? Right? How companies decentralize? So the reservation office is by revenue centers. The managers of various corporate owned holiday inns locations. How would you know that? Like how would you how do you connect? You're trying to understand it, right? You're trying to deduce the information from what's given to you. It's a guess, right? Educated guess. Yeah, but you can guess it wrong. That's right. So you will try to understand why is it wrong, right? So why so going back up to the number to letter A. Um, mm -hmm. Why is why is a red revenue center? So we're trying to see what type of responsibility that um, that manager has at that center. Okay. So right? how, how is revenue center? So manager of Holiday in Central Reservation Office. If it's a central reservation office, that manager is likely to have what responsibility? Building revenue. Right. Building We've talked about the revenue, right? Now, managers of various corporate-owned holiday in locations. Managers of various corporate-owned holiday in locations. Investment. What are they working on? You have investment, profit, revenue, and cost. Profit. 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 All right. Manager of the holiday in corporate division. If it's a corporate division. Also why are they investment? It's a higher level, right? So we have a manager on the level of a corporate division. He is unlikely to work with, uh, to be responsible for creation of the profit, right? Maybe managing the investment, yeah? Okay. Manager of the housekeeping department at the Holiday Inn. 
Why is it a cost? Manage over an expense. Alright. So do you do you start to understand it better? Alright. Manager of the Holiday Inn Express Corporate Division. So we have again this corporate division, right? That's overlooking the investment strategies. Manager of the complimentary breakfast buffet at the Holiday Inn Express. Why is this cost? Alright. Is it better? So what's the difference between revenue and profit? Well, your revenue manager was doing care of what? He was responsible for central reservation office. Is that more of an account? Right. And then profit various corporate owned holiday locations. It's a level of decentralization more than anything, right? Right? This is very like. That's know. for you to try I, to understand like the concept. Because like, I'm like reading the homework right now for like a question like this. It says a full time maker who will manage production and product costs and a web and like a web designer sales manager who will focus on increasing sales. So when it's given like a description like that, like the, the web designer will focus on increasing sales. Try so to understand the concept rather than. Um, learning by heart, okay? It's just for you, before we go into all of the uh, investment center definitions and evaluations, this is just for you to get a feel of it, okay? So no, different that. decentralization is going to lead to different uh, level of responsibility of the manager, and that's how you will try to understand what what center that manager, in, at what center this manager ha would have the responsibilities as following. All right? So take your best guess. Try to try to play with this and say, could that be true or could that be true? All right? Like on a test, it could be like a guess. Like, well, like, that's more like... <laughs> okay, that's not... All right. Use ROI, ROI, and EVA to evaluate investment centers. So here I wanted to pay more attention um, because it's a lot of calculations and who knows, right? All right. So we have our investment centers and that's all we're going to be talking for the rest of the class today. Um, so as we said in our investment centers, our managers are responsible for um, for the following. First, we're going to be maximizing the income, okay? Um, and that's going to be based on that investment that the company, investment capital that the com company made. And we'll also use the company assets efficiently so that the, the best is uh, taken out of that investment um, center's asset. So how would we do that? How would we as the unit managers do that? First, our manager um, is going to take decision-making responsibility over all of the assets of that unit, of that division. Um, it's not, it's not going to be evaluated. Um, can't agree with this all the way, but okay, cannot evaluate investment centers in the same manner as profit centers. True. Um, we'll look at this. Let's just concentrate on performance measurements right now. So our <coughs> performance measurements are going to serve a couple purposes. First, we're going to try to determine how much of that operating income um, our division is generating, that centralized, decentralized unit, and how efficiently the division is using the assets the company invested in. All right. Um, can, you, can you tell us what RI and EBA are? Yes, we'll go over this in a second. Um, okay, 
So our managers have the decision-making um, responsibility over all of the assets. And the, let's see how those, um, how those performance measurements are discussed further. So what is an ROI, RI, and EBA? Anyone knows? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's EVA, economic value added. Um, huh? <coughs> economy value added. All right. What's the KPI? Key performance. Huh? Key performance uh, indicators. Index. All right. Yeah, I've described that too before. <laughs> it, it indicator it's right index. It's the same. Okay, so KPIs for investment centers. This is a good illustration of how and what they're determining. All right, so we have our um, three KPIs. So divisions operating income and the divisions average total assets is what we're going to be working with. So we have our return on investment, ROI, economic value added, EBA, and the residual income, right, or RI. So all of these three incorporate our division assets and the operating income. And um, we're going to be using just the data for the division that we are evaluating, right? Not for the whole company. We're trying to evaluate just the center here, okay? So never use the whole company's uh, numbers to, to evaluate the center. Just a warning, you know. I don't know if you see it somewhere. All right, so let's look at the first one, and that's return on investment, or ROI. So what is it? Um, it's an amount of income an investment center <coughs> earns uh, relative to the amount of its assets, right? So it's our operating income divided by average total assets. Okay, so what are we measuring with this? We're measuring the amount of operating income an investment center earns, right? Relative to the amount of average total asset um, so the ROI, a division with a higher ROI, therefore, is going to be more likely to receive extra funds, right? Because it's providing a higher return, right? The higher ROI, the better, uh, the higher amount of funds it's likely to get. Now, luck and not so much is that we're comparing across all divisions in all time. Okay, some are going to be performing better, some are not, depending on the timing as well. And it can be also be, uh, used as a benchmark to compare against the industry competitors or itself. Okay, so let's expand the definition of ROI and see um, what our managers, how our managers are working with ROI. So management often restates the ROI equation as following. What are they doing it for? They're determining what drives division's ROI with this formula. So they take operating income, they divide it by sales, and then they multiply it by sales over over total assets. Now it's the same thing, right? It's still operate, operating income divided by every sole asset, but what is it giving to us? The expanded, the expanded um, version is going to show us first as a profit margin, right? Operating income divided by sales. So what it tells you is how much operating income that division earns for each dollar for sales. And then the second is the asset turnover, 
an asset turnover is how efficiently a division uses its average total asset to the generated sales. So asset turnover is the sales divided by average total asset. So you can say that the ROI is your profit margin multiplied by the asset turnover, right? All right. So expanded version of ROI gives a little bit more insight into what exactly is happening with that unit. So let me um, go over the example really quick. So what do we have here is our extreme sports uh, company. They make snowboards, downhill skis and such. The company found uh, it beneficial to split operations into two divisions based on the climate required for sports. Snow sport and non-snow sports, the following division information is available. So we have our two divisions, sales, operating, and average total assets, current liability, and calculated ROI. So they specified um, that they want a 16% target rate of return. And the company weighted average cost of capital is 10%. Its effectiveness, effective tax rate is 38. So let me explain to you how we, actually maybe even two, I'll see how much I want to explain. Calculate each division profit margin, asset turnover, and ROI. All right. So how do we calculate it? First, let's remember our profit margin is operating income and sales. Right? That's one of the components we said, correct? So we said that profit margin is operating income divided by sales is one part of the equation. And so we can calculate our profit margin. Uh, we have all the information given from snow sports and non snow sports. So we plug it into the formula and get the uh, profit margin. So what do we see here? We, we see that profit margin. 17%, right? The same for snow sports and non snow sports. What would it mean? That simply means that we're able to earn 17 cents of income on each dollar, right? Of the sales. Okay, so this is your inter interpretation. So, what does it mean that they have the same profit margin? Equal. They're equally profitable, right, on sale, on sales. All right. Um, so let's compute our asset turnover. That's again the second component, right? We've done the first. Now let's work with the second. It's your sales divided by total assets. Now, I'll put together again a table where I just plug in the numbers and find the asset turnover. So what is it saying to me? That my snow sport is 1.22, right? And the non-snow sport is 1.25. Those numbers are obviously rounded. So what is it telling me? It's telling me that, it's telling me that the non-snow sport division is able to generate dollar and 25 of sales, right? For every dollar of assets that the company invested in, all right? Um, so what is it telling us also? It means that the snow sports, or maybe non-snow sports, tell me that. Which one is more efficient? No, that's, that's good. All right, so. I would think it's maybe it's snow sports would be more, more efficient because they have more, uh, Excess income to be able to use how they want. Service. Yeah. And you are saying it. What did you say just a second? Did you say non snow sports are more efficient? It's more it's efficient. It's 1.25. I mean, if I'm investing in buying assets, or I can buy more assets in here, I will generate. So the more snow sport division is generating a dollar and 20 cents. 22 cents for every dollar of asset invested. Right? 
Alright. So now we need to calculate our return on investment. Where we just calculated the asset turnover and we calculated the profit margin. So let's look. Right? We just multiplying the two. And what do we get? 20.7 and 21.3 for this no sports and non no sports, right? You're just plugging in the numbers that you just calculated into the formula, profit margin less to turnover. So what does it mean? What does it mean that the ROI of snow sports is 20.7 and non snow sports is 21.3? Okay, in other words, anyone else? Return on investment, right? Not so it's quicker. All right. Huh? So they're in the wrong business. Okay, so let's look at the, um, where do we use this return on investment? Before we go. Um, we usually, before we go here, just give me a second. So we usually going to use our return on investment when the manager is probably willing to investigate um, either profit margin or asset turnover, right? Um, so let's look at the second one, residual income, right? So if a question is asking you, what is the return investment for? You look at, you remember the formula, right? It's so that the managers can investigate the profit margin and asset turnover and pinpoint where is the broken link, right? Where is the weak spot of the business operations. All right, so residual income is the second one. We have another commonly used KPI uh, here. So let's evaluate the investment center uh, with residual income. What does it do? It measures the division's profitability and the efficiency with which the division is using the um, average total assets. So how, by which means are we going to do that? Um, first, we'll compare the op division's operating income and the minimum operating income expected, given the size of the division or unit uh, assets. All right. So if that comparison shows us that the relationship is positive, then our income exceeds targeted rate of return. And if it's negative, then we are um, not meeting the target of the rate of return. Okay, that's great, but let's look at the RI equation. So what is it saying to us? So the RI is operating income less minimum acceptable operating income. So just to understand um, what is this minimum acceptable operating income? We um, write out the residual income formula, and it's operating income minus targeted rate of return multiplied by the average total asset. Right? So, that's what our top managers are going to expect to. Um, for this division to earn, right? To earn as a, uh, with the average total assets, given these second part, right? The average total assets. So this is your minimum acceptable operating income. All you're doing is just writing it out. So what is the, this target rate of return? We understand what is the average total assets. Um, targeted, targeted rate of return is your minimum accept, acceptable rate of return management expecting expecting a division to earn, right? So when we are, um, when the relationship is positive, we're exceeding an expectation. When it's negative, we're not as effective. 
So why would we use this residual income? Again, just understanding from the um, definition of the residual income. First, um, it's better than ROI in the terms of goal congruence, right? We're working with the target rate of return and the average total asset here. And we're comparing it to the operating income. Um, all right. One of the big advantages is that the RI numbers are usually better at motivating than ROI, our um, division management. All right, so let's look at the economic value added, EVA. That's your special type of RI calculations, okay? So we're still talking about the RI, really. All right, so look at the, um, we're looking at the uh, division's residual income, and we're trying to understand what is, what is it, its value to the company's primary stakeholders. So we have two players, investors and creditors. <coughs> investors are our owners, the creditors are the bondholders, and we have them evaluating uh, stakeholders uh, willing to evaluate how efficiently that division is using its assets. So what are we going to consider here? Our after-tax income, assets used to generate after-tax operating income for stakeholders, and then minimum rate of return that's required by stakeholders. Okay, so economic value added as two players, investors and the creditors, right? All right. Um, so let's compare the EVA with the RI to make it clear what's the difference. So look at this, our RI is only operating income and EVA is after tax operating income, right? And then the second part we said for RI is average total assets multiplied by the target rate of return. Now what we're gonna do for the EVA, we'll subtract from the average total assets the current liabilities first, right? And then multiply it by uh, weighted average cost of capital, okay? So it's augmented, right? EVA is similar to RI, but it's subtracting everything that needs to be accounted to, um, to help stakeholders to make a decision. All right, so what are the differences? Again, EVA is gonna use our after-tax operating income, the just as average total Sorry, total assets by current liabilities and we replace management target rate of return. <laughs> All right. Let me see if there is. Um, we, you are lucky today, you're not going to have a quiz, but I want to finish this. Yeah, it's the last day, so I decided not to. But who knows, maybe something on Wednesday coming up. All right, so let's look at 24-7, um, and let me go over this, just to help you to settle this RI down. So Extreme Sports Company, again, we're making snowboards, same story, right? Now, this, huh? What? We have the same information given to us, right? Sales, operating, average total assets, current liabilities, and ROI is given to us. We have the same, the same, the same, the same, the rest even. Now what we need to do is instead of ROI, we'll try to compute RI. And then compare it to the previous results that we got. All right. So how we're going to start with what? With the formula. So our RI is operating income less the minimum acceptable income. And we said that it's target rate of return multiplied by total assets. Right? So once we calculate these numbers for snow sports and non-snow sports, we see that the snow sports are right. I'm just plugging numbers in off the table, right? Um, you probably, I think you're going to have an exercise on this. You plug the numbers in, you find your snow sports are right. Now pay attention, it's in dollars, right? 
although it's uh, we're looking for the rates. Okay, so now non sport non snow sports again we found um, that is three hundred fifty six thousand versus two hundred fifteen. So what is it what is this income telling us, right? Residual income, what is this um, indicator showing us? The bold values are positive, right? The the residual income is positive for both non-sport and the sport. Um, so we're earning some income. Looks like uh, the, resu the results are consistent, right, with our previous um, ROI. All right, so let's look at the second part where we're going to be calculating the EVA, the same information we're going to be comparing later EVA with the RI, right? Because we said that EVA is an extended version of RI for our stakeholders. Okay, so how do we do this? Again, we put the formula together for the EVA, so our after tax operating income, right? Minus total assets, current liabilities, and WACC. So how do we plug, we plug in numbers in? Okay, they're all given to you and they will be given to you. So this is an example of just knowing the formula, plugging in the numbers, done. Okay. So we calculated that the snow EVA is 171 and the non-snow is 284, 860. So what is it telling us? They both have the positive economic value. Um, indicators, right? <clears throat> so both both are generating income. Um, it's probably also telling us, and tell me how you can see that, it's probably also telling us is the long, that our long-term creditors are, um, our long-term credit exceeds the expectations, okay? Um, the expectations of our long-term creditors is ex exceeding the numbers that we're getting, all right, um, for both the stockholders. So let me see, right, we have the positive economic uh, value added, and so the divisions are generating enough income for the investors to have um, to have a positive outlook for our creditors and the stakeholders, right? All right. <coughs> Hold on. Um, all right, so also just for you to, uh, to see this. So these are all the different um, indexes that we've gone through. There is a table in your book I didn't write down what what it was exactly. It's the three investment centers for KPIs, and it summarizes the uh, um, the equations. So make sure you look at it. All right. Uh, it's a good summary of all of the formulas. And it's really easy to work with this. But well, we're not having the quiz, right? But it's still ten minutes, so let's go over through exercises. So. The Quaker Foods division of PepsiCo is most likely treated as revenue center cost investment or profit. Any idea? It's your Quaker Foods of PepsiCo. Okay, I hear a revenue, I hear investment, I hear profit. Which one is that and why? It's a profit. We have Quaker Foods, right? It belongs to PepsiCo. It's an investment, that's right, Ben. It's an investment center. All right? 
Uh, the performance, I have some still left mm -hmm. it, so I wanted to go. You're going to have more. By the way, the slides are already available, I believe. The performance evaluation of a cost center is typically based on its sales volume variance, ROI, static budget variance, flexible budget variance. For the cost center, what is it? Why is it a flexible budget? Performance evaluation of a cost center. Why is it a flexible budget? Yeah? Okay, that's good. You're comparing the actual to the budgeted, right? Or not? Yeah? Okay, I think um, so that would be a multiple choice question. Okay, if you were to calculate the following data applies to question, uh, assume so you have some uh, data for residential division of keeper faucets. You have sales, operating income, and such and such. You need to calculate your profit margin. So here's what I'm expecting you to have: is operate is an understanding that the profit margin is operating income over sales. Calculate it and get the percentage. That's as far as we go, all right? On the exam. No question. Yes. The same goes for asset turnover. Yes. Are we gonna have questions? I really didn't like that. I think that's, that's a little it's more opinionated, and I think we'll spend more time on that. <coughs> Excuse me, then show your work. Go and pause this out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't like it. This question. <laughs> can we take a, can we take a class vote? Take class no, vote. we can't take a class vote, but I can tell you maybe it's not there. No. Maybe. <laughs> No, you cannot, you cannot vote on the exam. Come on. All right, so if you see a question of this kind, that's the calculation you need to produce. Yes. <laughs> yep. All right, so who had questions come up here? Your quizzes, you really want to pick them up. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna sit down. Now you understand that you're standing right here and we're discussing your brain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I mean, you feel okay with that? Okay. Um, I saw you. Yeah, what? Uh-huh. Um, okay, I need you to take the picture of that note that I made on your exam and send it to me, and I'll adjust it. I'll adjust it. I don't know why. Okay? Can you do that? I have an example. 